listening to the Cock and Bull Podcast. This is a weekly history podcast where I talk about uh, weird shit they didn't tell you about already. Nathan, how you doing? Oh, I'm delightful. How are you doing? I'm, I'm great. Why don't you just tell people a little bit about yourself, you know? Ah, yes. Well, other than the fact that I'm now sitting in a sweat box for, for history and education purposes, I uh, was a person that has a degree in history. I was educated by a school. I have a, a piece of paper that says I should know this kind of stuff. Uh, and yet I have a distinct feeling you're going to prove me wrong. Nathan, I want to talk to you a bit about hypnosis. Oh, I would love for you to talk to me about hypnosis. I spent two years uh, in my college career as a, as a psych major. As a, oh, I thought you were, I really thought you were about to say as a hypnosis major, and I was about to say that you have, uh, <laughs> you have a much better college than I did. Eventually, I decided uh, I would rather spend my adult life uh, not eating baked beans under a bridge uh, but by that point, I had already taken a handful of classes that touched on hypnosis. Now, now, hold on. And so now, hypnosis. Now, hold on. I feel, I feel uh-huh. like we need to. I feel like we need to sort of pause here. You decided that you didn't want to be poor, so you got a journalism degree. Yeah. Well, okay. More specifically, communication. That seems less specific as a whole, you know, entity. But okay, moving on. <laughs> hypnosis, sometimes dismissed as a pseudoscience, is a widely discussed topic of psychology. Another thing that people also think is pseudoscience sometimes. Uh, While there's some serious myth behind it, kind of like the Hollywood idea that you can turn someone into a zombie, it's actually a lot more clinical than that. Uh, What it essentially boils down to is relaxation and putting yourself into a uh, a state where you can be suggested, they like to say. Uh, You can be suggested to, I don't know, quit smoking, study harder, quit biting your nails, stuff like that. So hypnosis only really works if you want it to. Which is the most important fact to know here. You can't be suggested so, so, to... So what I'm hearing is that hypnosis is kind of like vampires. You have to invite them in. That's exactly what it's like. Hypnosis okay, is like just, vampires. Just, That's a good rule of thumb. Just making just making sure. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready now. I have my context. So you couldn't be suggested to, say, believe that the room is full of vampires if you're actually telling yourself, no, nah, that's fucking dumb. So certain people are more suggestible than others, and there are absolutely fakers. Uh, If you've ever had a live demonstration of it, like with an audience volunteer or something like that, there's a huge chance that all or some of them are just faking it because of how wildly stupid some of the suggestions are. Aw, so you're telling me my lock-in at the, at my senior year of high school where they made us all chuck, cluck like chickens, that wasn't, that wasn't real? We weren't, we weren't compelled by the power of hypnosis? (laughs) That's, you know, I don't want to be the one to tell you that, so I just want to let you keep believing. Okay. Uh, while the name hypnotism is relatively new, the concept of relaxation and trance-like states uh, are actually very, very old. So I want to date back 5,000 years ago. <laughs> oh, okay. Quick, quick jaunt. Jump on my magic bus and we're going to go back way back. We're going to go way, way back to the Temple of Imhotep. Imhotep. Now that sounds like, is that not the main villain from the movie The Mummy? I can't confirm or deny. All I know is... All I know is The Rock was in it. No, no, that was the that was the Scorpion King. You jumped in like three Mummy movies in. No, there was there was The Mummy. Then there was The Mummy Returns, and then there was some bullshit with The Rock. No, 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 no. I'm talking about OG Brendan Fraser, The Mummy. Okay, I clearly need to do my homework, so I don't feel qualified clearly. to discuss it. Clearly, uh, yes. Egypt, uh, by the way, Saqqara, Egypt. I don't claim to be a pronunciation major. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that if we ever put this on the internet, someone somewhere will correct you and say that you've said that horribly wrong and that you've offended them as a person. So good work. Okay. All right. You know, I had it coming. Uh, Saqqara, Egypt was on the forefront of hypnosis. There, people would come to ingest herbs, recite prayers for a few hours, and would then be led to a darkened room where they would be guided into a dreamlike state and the cure would be revealed to them. People would leave there with illnesses cured. There were also oracles it's in a ancient... Burning man. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, pretty much. Or they would also leave all their bikes behind. Uh, oracles in ancient Greece would provide a similar service, offering fortunes and healing words. There was even a ritual performed by a certain oracle in her temple, which was built over a crack in the earth that leaked an intoxicating fume. There she was said to consult with Apollo and would deliver healing words and wisdom to those who sought her out. So anyway, with that taken care of, May 23rd, 1734... Franz Anton Mesmer was born in Germany on the shores of Lake Constance in the territory of Swabia and in the village of Isnang. I probably got that I'm one wrong. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and jump in again as a degreed person. You uh-huh. said all of that wrong. Would you care to correct me? Do you want to Not even a little bit. No, no, no. I know how the internet works. No, you're not going to you're not going to box me into that trap. Nice try. <laughs> so wait a minute. You're telling me I got it wrong. You just don't know what right is. Uh, pff, have you been on the internet lately? Absolutely. 
For other notable Swabians, see the likes of Albert Einstein or Johann George Faust, the man who inspired the myths of Dr. Faust. Uh, to be clear, by the way, hey! I'm talking... <laughs> yeah, you know, that's us. Uh, to be clear... It's a callback! It's I'm like when they say the name of the movie in the movie. It's fun. <laughs> to be clear, I'm talking about the Christopher Marlowe plays about Dr. Faust. I'm not talking about the Thomas Mann version from 1947 because the first one is an awesome tale about, like, necromantic deals with the devil, and the other one is about a really sad music guy with syphilis. So, and that, that's boring shit. Anyway, uh, back to 1734. Back to Franz. <laughs> the, the father of Franz was Anton Mesmer, who served as archbishop in Constance, a city of the state of Baden-Württemberg in southern Germany. This is just a cavalcade of words I'm gonna fuck up. <laughs> You really should have picked something more in your wheelhouse for these early ones, man. Really should have his, picked something more in your wheelhouse. His mother was Maria Ursula Mikkel. She was a locksmith's daughter. I'm sure, by the way, history isn't being sexist here, and that was just her big defining feature. <laughs> you know, a locksmith's daughter. That's, that's okay. All Dad right, was cool. Archbishop of Constanz. Mother was a locksmith's daughter. Um, by the way, his father was also a forest warden. Did you know that's a term for park ranger? <laughs> Because when I hear Pardon? that, I, yeah, Forest Warden, when I hear that, I think Duke of the Trees, like. When I hear that, I think of, like, a Game of Thrones looking guy, like, hanging out with Ents. That's where the Tree Warden patrols. Yes. Franz, Franz was the third of nine children, and according to some accounts, he had an idyllic childhood. It is really hard for me to imagine what an idyllic childhood would be like today, but for uh, young Mesmer, that apparently meant he got to play in the woods a lot. I was going to say the back then, idyllic childhood was just you didn't die of the typhoid. <laughs> the wolves didn't get you. The, Franz grew up you on weren't the shores. stolen by the engines. <laughs> in, in Germany, I don't know if they had that issue. Now, the barbarians probably. They, I you was about to say, by okay, a, a stolen by the tribe. Gauls. What do you want? The Goths. Franz grew up on the shores of Lake Constance, where he played in the woodlands and streams. Quote, he enjoyed tracking streams back to their origins. <sighs> Man, I am glad I live now and not back then. Like, isn't it isn't it great to live in a time where you don't just sit by the river and think, Oh, I wonder where that goes. I could, like, hang up this call right now and play Hearthstone and not, like, go like, I wonder where the river becomes not a river. The boy began his education at age eight at the Green Mountain Monastery, where he learned Latin. Initially, he was supposed to become a priest, much in the way of his father, but Franz would go through the Jesuit College of Constanz at age 12, the Jesuit Theological School of Dillingen at age 16, and the Jesuit College of Ingolstadt at the age of 20. Uh, between the ages of 16 and 20, he began to spend more and more of his class time focusing on logic, metaphysics, and theology. Hey, I have a degree in those things. Yeah, you got a philosophy bachelor's, yeah? I do. I know what those words meant. How'd that go? Uh, moving on. Since people just went to school for fun in the 1700s, Dr. Mesmer decided to go to the University of Vienna in Austria. He originally went to study law, but he dropped it after a year. Because I assume he just didn't want to become a tree warden like his father. I mean, if he's anything like me, he was like, wow, that seems like a lot of work. I should do something that's not that hard. <laughs> Instead, Mesmer wanted to pursue medicine. By 1765, age 31, he was just one doctoral thesis away from practicing. His thesis was how heavenly bodies affected human health. So astrology. Uh, kind of like medicine astrology. Yeah, you can call it whatever you want. This guy was doing his thesis in horoscopes. God, I wish I was going to school back then. <laughs> he's in Vienna now, by the way. Uh, I just want to make sure we know where he's at. He didn't leave after he got the degree, so now he's got his doctorate. He's married to a recently widowed woman who is 10 years older than him and super rich. And his Good wife's girl. father bought him a huge mansion. Naturally. God uh, damn, I wanted to go to school back then. This was so much easier. His practice starts kicking up some wind and, and the money comes a flying. That wife, by the way, he would often call her dim-witted to just like anybody they were talking to. Like, hey, this is my stupid wife. I hope you like her. Where did the locksmith, where did the daughter of the locksmith go? That was his mom, wasn't Yeah, that it? was his mom. That was his mom. Okay, okay. Oh, and, so uh, marrying up. So he went from he went from son of locksmith's daughter to uh, marrying the, the sugar mama. Exactly, exactly. A dumb, um, dumb sugar mama. Yeah, so he and his stupid wife uh, were very well off. Uh, he was so well off at the time that he hired out a 12-year-old Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart to come play a private show for him in his garden. 
Is Mozart's... that the equivalent of hiring Bieber to like play your kid's Sweet Sixteen? It, that is exactly what it is. Mozart's father uh, brought the boy along and commented that Mesmer had a kick-ass garden. <laughs> Mesmer just keeps getting more and more popular until he's among the snootiest aristocrats of Vienna. He and his stupid wife were somehow very happy together with friends and family calling the marriage, quote, a traditionally happy one. I'm not oh, quite sure what... No, 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 you misunderstand. Traditionally happy back then meant they are miserable at all hours of the day, but damn it, it looked good. <laughs> As a physician... Uh, Mesmer always had a trouble dealing with nervous complaints or issues of pain. So Mesmer believed that ill health was governed by a planetary influence and that Newton's theories uh, could explain sickness like it could gravity. Uh, Mesmer thought that he and his thesis were, were like really hitting something that nobody had thought of before. I, I mean, I see, this is the thing. Part of me wants to hate him because this is stupid. But other part of me wants to be like, oh, well, I mean, homie was at least trying to explain it with science. That's better than, like, 80% of the population now. Oh, exactly, exactly. It'd be like if Neil deGrasse Tyson got on Twitter and was like, hey, I can totally solve your anxiety issues with Real Housewives of Orange County bullshit. Like, I don't know. I, I, I just feel like this is easy. The body, Mesmer believed, was like a series of tubes. <laughs> wait, wait, there was no, 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 uh, stop, mm, no, stop. Is something stop. wrong? Did that, did did that not, sentence upset no. you? No, no, Al Gore is not inventing hypnotism here. No, stop it. It's not a series of tubes. <laughs> he believed there was an invisible fluid in these tubes that was moved naturally by gravity, although sometimes there were kinks and jams, like a hose. <laughs> Mesmer first called this animal gravity and thought he could apply some sort of technique to better the flow of these invisible fluids. And that's when he decided the invisible fluids were probably metallic and revised the name to animal magnetism. So... To make sure, Nathan, that whoa, we're... Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, 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 Pause now. Because that's an old-timey phrase that they used. Like, that's a thing. Like, that's what that's what Don Juan had. That's what, that's what the, the... If you were a ladies' man, you had that animal magnetism. Don't, don't tell me that comes from this bullshit. It... It, 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 it kind of did. So, to make sure we're on so the same page... So you're telling me that this man of science, this man of science... Who I'm assuming they've cut people open back and back back by this point, right? Like we've we've vivisected a human being once or twice. Uh, you know, I... his his assumption is that the body is made up of invisible tubes transporting invisible magnetic liquid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why he's on. And he's gonna unkink the hose that makes us not able to spray. I don't I don't understand any of this. So to make sure, Nathan, that we're on the same page, then your body's full of tubes. There's invisible fluid moving around in those tubes. It's moved by the planets. It's probably metallic. Um, by the way, fun little side note there. Okay. What he's referring to as invisible fluid is probably electricity. Uh, they, they didn't understand electricity. They didn't call it electricity by this point. Um, but people like Isaac Newton would call it the spirit. And it was, like, horribly misunderstood at the time. So... The kinks and jams. I mean, I mean, I mean to be perfectly honest, as a as an adult in the United States, I don't really understand how electricity works either. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say that I'll, I'll give him a pass on this one. <laughs> the kinks and jams, by the way, are what cause illness. Mesmer thought if you had a pain in your knee, why not? A, a bad rash, a, a chronic depression. That's just because your tubes are jammed. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> I get my tubes jammed, and man, I'm I, I'm I'm not feeling great. <laughs> So Nathan, how do you think you? Un the thing is, is this probably sounded super smart. Like, if, if if it's like the equivalent of calling like being like, well, the humors are out of balance, so you're sick. People probably thought like, oh, look at this man with his advanced science and his knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, well, Nathan, how do you think you unjam inviso tubes full of metal liquid? I'm gonna assume that you wang people with magnets over and over until it goes. I don't know. That's Nathan. That's pretty close. I'm gonna give you a pat on the back there. In 1773, <laughs> when he was 39, Mesmer worked with a patient named Fraulein Osterlin, a woman who suffered from quote chronic hysterics. Which, if you want to talk about words, that pretty much means this woman's upset because she's got woman shit going on, and that's annoying the men. So, if there's one thing I've learned about hysteria in my uh, my studies, it's that generally speaking, if it it's mentioned in a historical text, it means I'm an asshole and I'm about to prescribe finger banging as the solution. <laughs> Mesmer, Mesmer finally found a cure for her pains when he gave her a series of iron medicines. Ah. He induced her into a calm and relaxed state and then rubbed magnets on her body <laughs> and her pains were relieved. Wait, 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 wait. He put her in the calm state and then rubbed the magnets. He's not saying that he rubbed magnets on her and she calmed down. 
Yeah, no, no. He had to get her relaxed first before he rubbed the magnets on her. It's foreplay, Nathan. Did he say how he relaxed her? Because I'm going back to the finger banging. Oh, God. By the way, I'm pretty sure that's how they get nails out of cow's stomachs, is you just rub magnets on them. Um, uh, I thought you were going to say finger banging, and I was very concerned. Mm, mm, we're not there yet. After the success of Fraulein, Mesmer believed his theory was actually true. In fact, he even doubled down. He named the trances he was using to crises, which were essential in breaking down the obstacles in your tubes. Uh, but more important than that, though, Mesmer believed that you didn't just need a magnet to manipulate the magnetic fluids in someone's body. If you were trained and gifted enough, Mesmer said, you could be the magnet. Whoa, 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 no. Uh-uh, no, no, stop. You cannot, I, I, I cannot the secret myself into being magnetic. That doesn't work that way. I can't just mind over matter myself into being magnetic. That's like a state of nature. This dude is invoking <laughs> Newton. He cannot say, if you believe hard enough, you'll be magnetic this time. <laughs> So, if anything, I think he's, like, trying to imply there's, like, enough midichlorians in your blood, then you're the magnet. God, yeah, um, mm -hmm. there is no magnet. And just imagine me doing the stupid little <laughs> finger thing. All right. So, I he guess. begins to, he begins to take on more patients, uh, gives them more iron to eat, puts them to sleep, and then he just says, fuck the magnet, and starts hovering his hands over people, forcing oh. the kinks out of, forcing out their kinks with his own animal magnetism. That's finger banging. That is code. That's all he did. He put them to sleep. He gave them some, like, Bill Cosby juice. He knocked them out. And he just molested them. This is a Harvey Weinstein all over again. He was very particular about who was allowed to watch the sessions. But according to one quote, uh, in many of these treatments, he was a forceful and rather dramatic participant. Yep. Okay, cool. I stand by my, my assertions. The thing is, Nathan, is is the more I read, it's really not, like, refuting your finger-banging argument. And I'm just, I'm, I'm worried. <laughs> I stand by the fact that this guy's whole solution was knock her out I'm with worried the that this juice and just go to town like a 13-year-old in the back of mom's Honda. I'm worried you're going to ruin this poor doctor's reputation just, just for our listeners already. They're not going to have a good Im image of him going in. And I think I that's apologize. unfair. I apologize. Let's be real, listeners. His name is Dr. Mesmer. You know this wasn't going to end well. <laughs> so he begins to... Uh, oh, no. I already read that part. Excuse me. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite parts. So to quote a biography of his, Mesmer began to believe that he could transfer some of his personal surplus of magnetic fluid into inanimate objects by touching them. <sighs> He would magnetize patients' clothes and beds so they could receive the healing fluid every hour of the day. He magnetized trees in his garden and chairs in his practice rooms to benefit his patients. He invented the bouquet, a large wooden tub equipped with a layer of iron fillings which Mesmer had saturated with a large dose of his animal magnetism. And upon the iron fillings, he placed bottles of water which he had... Which he had again magnetized by touch. Each bottle held an iron, which emerged from the tub for patients to hold, allowing magnetic fluid to enter their bodies. Eventually, Mesmer built bouquets large enough to treat 20 to 30 people simultaneously. He built the fucking magnet tub full of his magnet juice, is what that just said. Okay, so essentially what you're saying is Stan Lee is a goddamn thief. This is Magneto. You're telling me the origin <laughs> stories of Magneto. This motherfucker oh, yeah, is basically that's a, saying, that's... I jerked off all over the place, and I made it super magnetic, guys. Oh, my God. Ugh. So, By the way, for the, rest of this, for the rest of this, or until you put a more stark image in my brain, I'm imagining this motherfucker walking around in a Magneto helmet, but in, like, old-timey garb. So just bear with me. That is so much better, because if you look up an image of this man, he looks like his chin has a double chin. He's, he's just upsetting to look at. Ooh, uh, so like, a, like, a, like, there's, like you can hear him say the word, the, the letter B. Like, blah, Exactly. Blah, like that. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. B-word fat. Um, B-word fat. A note on hypnotism. Fat. A note on hypnotism. Turns out, most of the illnesses that hypnotism cures are what are called psychosomatic, meaning they are fictional ailments you've convinced yourself that you're feeling. I was about to say, so, you mean all the ailments I've convinced myself I had over the years? Do tell! <laughs> so sure, but playing pretend can cancel out your pretend knee pains, but there's quite a few more things playing pretend doesn't actually work for. 
Anyway, in 1777, Mesmer met with a blind girl. Oh, no. Oh, no. Please tell me he put his goof juice all over her and made her see. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I need to breathe after that one. I don't know. <laughs> Mesmer was a practiced idiot at this point, and knew all he had to do was run his magnet drano through her tubes, so he brought her into a one-on-one -on -one session in his office, and when the girl came out, she could see again. No! No! Stop! Ne no! Damn it, no! It doesn't work that way! That's not well, how well, this happens! Nathan, what's weird about it is, like, as soon as she left Mesmer's presence, she couldn't see again. No! Mesmer had seemingly only hypnotically convinced her that she could see and like gave her vivid enough descriptions with his magic words and magnet hands that she thought she could see when she was hanging out with him. I can't. I can't. No, I can't. This is not speaking acceptable. Speaking of magnet hands, the parents Why of the girl... Why are we speaking of magnet hands? The parents of the girl alleged that Mesmer had seduced her while he was working on her. Ah! The, uh... The medical association responded by opening up an investigation. Mesmer responded by getting the fuck out of Vienna. He did not inform his wife that he was leaving. Also, she wasn't his wife anymore. Oh, that was quick! You want to investigate me? I'm going to investigate the road out of here. In January 1778, at the age of 43, Mesmer appeared in Paris. Well, oh, I say appeared him. because he just popped up. Like, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Just pooped out of that hole. He set to work by establishing another practice in a Parisian neighborhood. He developed a quick following among the rich and gullible, and soon he was back to pushing fluids and lining pockets. He even published a book called The Discovery of Animal Magnetism and Its 27 Principles. Mesmer quickly became something of a celebrity in Paris and caught the eye of King Louis XVI. The king and queen liked his work so much that he was given a royal grant to continue his research. Uh, Mesmer was soon treating large groups of people in single sessions, and was running 200 patients through his home every day. That is whoa, whoa, a whoa, lot whoa. of people getting magnetically finger banged. 200 pa Hold on, whipping out the iPhone. There are 24 hours in a day. There is 60 minutes in a day. There is 60 minutes in an hour. That's 1,440. And how many did you say? 200 patients. If he was running them 24-7, that's 7.2 patients a minute. <laughs> or an hour. I don't know which. I don't do math. That's not the degree I got. It's it's mesmermania all over again, and just like in Vienna, nothing gold can stay, because around 1784, Mesmer was once again under scrutiny for his conduct with women. Weird, I would never guess that. He would often bring them into one-on-one -on -one sessions in private rooms, and they would leave entranced and groggy about their session. Uh, so naturally, no, people start to suspect- No, this is Bill Cosby! You're telling me the goddamn Bill Cosby story! No, unacceptable. <laughs> No. People stop. begin to, to people begin to suspect that he was manipulating women for some not so magnetic touchings. Uh, and to combat the speculation that he was a rapist and and that his work might be total bullshit, his friend King Louis assembled a royal council of scientific integrity to take a look at his theory and prove that he's a cool guy. On that Can we council, focus on the fact that if your friend King Louis thinks you're okay, it doesn't matter because he's a god? Like, that's the whole gist? Like, why are we in, Why are we getting a committee on this? Like, we don't need the Warren Commission. If the king says you're cool, you're cool. I think the king wanted to believe he was cool, but in the back of his head was like, mm, he consulted with my wife. I'm, you know, maybe, maybe I need to, mm. So, on that council was uh, a, a couple names, um... Antoine Lavoisier, the revolutionary chemist who named the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Oh, you know, uh, no big deal. And Ben Franklin. What? <laughs> Benny Franks is up in there? Mm -hmm. Benny Franks getting up on this. Oh, and you know your shit. shit's whack when Benny Franks on the investigation. If you've got Ben Franklin on the goddamn commission, this is, so you've got the guy that named, you know, the elements, and then Ben Franklin are your are your commission. Mm-hmm. And so, uh... That's a pretty good commission! Benny Frank and Lavoisier start uh, taking a look at, and weird, like, just as this commission concludes that mesmerism and, and his theories were, like, total bullshit, he disappears again. Once again, didn't leave a forwarding address. <sighs> you want to know what's weird? I'm starting that? to believe this guy may not be on the up and up. 
<laughs> he and Ben Franklin were actually still friends after that. What? No, stop it. How does he disappear and still be friends with Ben Franklin? Like, I... I don't know. I I understand. I understand. You had to you had to say everything was bullshit, but we're still cool, right? Like, <sighs> I just gotta say, I love you. I love your work with the kite. So good. This we don't is my best electric- friend. So what? So wait. Twenty minutes ago, we didn't understand electricity, and now we're talking about Ben Franklin and kite flying. I uh, feel like we understood electricity. Mm, I okay. If anything, they're happening like concurrently. Uh, I- Okay, good, good. So, so, for, so what you're saying so, is Ben Franklin's super scientific research on kite flying was happening at the same time? Yeah, yeah. Ben Franklin, uh, pimp science inventor of America, was working on electricity while he was working on m- magneto finger banging. That's, that's, that's the page we're on. I am uncomfortable with all of this. Keep going. So for the next 10 years, he jumped from f- uh, France to Germany to Great Britain, Austria, Switzerland, never sticking in one place for very long. Uh, he returned to Vienna in 1793 only to suffer the indignity of being deported from the city. Uh, the reason given was that his political views were suspicious. What? Wait, is, is finger-banging girls with magneto fingers a political opinion these days? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, oh, okay. It's sometimes called evangelical uh, conservatism. He spent his final years in the German town of Mearsburg, still close to Lake Constance where he grew up. Uh, and, and unfortunately, Nathan, nothing, nothing gold can stay. And on March 1st, 1815, Franz Mesmer suffered a stroke. And on the 5th, with the end imminent, he asked his dearest friend, a Catholic priest, uh, a man named Fessler, if he would come to his bedside to play his favorite instrument for him, a glass harmonica. Uh, the priest... Uh, the priest hurried to the bedside of the dying man with the glass harmonica in hand. Uh, he died. He died like a, a minute after he wrote that letter. It was, it was, it was a bit too late. As well, he should have. Uh, also, quote: On that day, his pet parrot stopped singing forever, and I just think that's probably the saddest thing I've ever read. Uh, okay, so this feels like we're at the end. Uh huh. You need to clarify the fact that we talked about hypnosis. Right. And the guy who was the king of it, his name was Mesmer. Well, Nathan, I'm glad you say that. To this day, Mesmer's work is better known for its contributions to the psychological study of hypnotism. And thanks to him, we have the term mesmerized. He's a goddamn Pokemon. I want to thank all of my sources, uh, which you can find in the blog version of this episode over at uh, cockandbullblog.wordpress.com. That's a mouthful. I know. I'm going to get a new domain name eventually. Uh, I'm currently looking at buying ismyfriendaghost.com. It's only a dollar. Uh, but I especially want to thank... Magneticfingerbang.org? I especially want to thank famousscientists.org for their fantastic piece on old magnet hands mesmer. Um, we've got a Twitter at cockandbullpod, uh, so take a look at that. I uh, hope you learned something. Nathan? How'd you like this one? Uh, I feel like I can't watch the X-Men the same way. I also feel like if someone tries to hypnotize someone, I'm going to feel dirty inside. You know, I think in the end, that's all I can ask for. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week.